praise you. Father, we honor you. We lift you on high. We glorify and honor your name, Lord, for you are good, you're wonderful, and you're an amazing God. There is no other God like you. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to just come here and lift our voices to praise you, to honor you, and to lift you on high. We just want to declare that you are God. In this service today, you are God. Jehovah is your name, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We honor you as we begin this service. God, we pray that you walk with us, you guide us, and you lead us, God. And in everything we shall do here, Lord, it shall be for all the glory and honor of your name. We honor you and we praise you and we worship you today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Come on, somebody just lift up your voice and give God a mighty praise in this place. You can clap your hands to Jesus. Amen, amen. Beautiful. You can say hi to one or two, three people who are sitting on the left on the right side of where you are. You can say hi to Rev as well. Uh, and if you don't have a neighbor, you can say move close to a neighbor because you're going to do a lot of singing together as a team. We've come to praise you. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's clap our hands together. Hey. Come on, clap your hands to Jesus. Hey. With a smile on your face. Come on now. Hey. Oh, we've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to love you. Oh, we've come to praise you. For oh, the good things you have done. Oh, we've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to love you. Oh, we've come to praise you. For oh, the good things you have done. Oh, we've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to love you. Oh, we've come to praise you. For the good things you have done. We've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to love you. Oh, we've come to praise you. Thank you. 
en Dios. Now we dance to the Lord together. declare Hosanna in the highest that let our king be lifted up let our king be lifted high in everything this praises let him be lifted high for he is good he is wonderful he is amazing Lord we love you Lord we praise you Lord oh come on let's join in together and we say Hosanna we say In the highest, let our King, let our King be lifted up. Hosanna, Hosanna. We lift our hands and we say, Hosanna. King be lifted up. Oh, Hosanna. Oh, 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 oh. We lift our voices and we say, Hosanna.
lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, let our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted. Let our King be lifted up. Let our King be lifted up. Oh, the night. Oh, the night. Oh, the night. Oh, the night. Come on, just take some few minutes. God before the Lord, just worship Him, lift your voices, and to Him He is worthy, He is a good God, He is an amazing Father, there is nobody else like Him, there is no one else like our God, there is no one else like our God, God will lift you up, you lift you up, may you be lifted up Jesus, be lifted up Jesus, be lifted up, be lifted up, be lifted up, be lifted up Jesus, nobody else like you, come on just lift your voice and worship God in this place. Lift your voice and worship Him in this moment. Lift your voice and worship Him. Lift your voice and declare how wonderful He is. How amazing He is. How powerful He is. How good He is. He's our good God. He's an amazing Father. There is nobody else like Him. We praise Him. We honor You. Come, come on, just lift your voice and honor Him today. Because He is good. He has done wonderful, amazing things. He has done marvelous things in our lives. And that is why we lift him up. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift you up. 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 Hallelujah, God, we glorify you. Come on, just take some few minutes and adore God. God. He's worthy of all the worship. Father, we're here just to adore you. We're here to call you Hosanna. You are highly lifted up, O God. We're here to worship you, the great I am. Receive all the glory and honor. Because there's no other God but you. We worship you, O God. We worship you, King of glory. Receive all the glory and honor, O God. It is your children, O God, just lifting our voices to you, Almighty God, in adoration. We lift you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the moments of the praise and worship that God, we've worshipped you. We have praised your God and we've experienced your presence, oh God. And Father, as we are listening to your word, we pray that God, your Holy Spirit, will take preeminence in this place. That everything, oh God, that will be listening today, oh God, everything that will be hearing, oh God, will be coming straight from your mouth, oh God. And Father, as your servant, I'm here presenting myself to you, asking you, God, to use me for your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Can we all shout Amen? Amen. One more time, can we all shout Amen? Amen. And wherever you are, can you just put your hands together for Jesus? That is not enough. Come on, just praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. He's worthy of all the praises. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you can be seated. Hallelujah. Praise be to Jesus. This is another day that the Lord has given us and it is amazing because we are here to celebrate what God has done in our lives. Let me just ask, today is um, how many days we are at in our fasting season? This is the day number 30. Can you all shout 36? And we thank God because of that. Uh, we are approaching the end of our fasting season. Um, and uh, on this Sunday, the 24th of this month, will be the, the last day of our fasting season. Praise be to Jesus. It will be the last day of our fasting season. And uh, allow me just to give you, uh, to prepare you for this, the, the last day of our fasting season. The first thing that I want you to know is that that day, it will be on Sunday, it will be on Sunday, it will be anointing service. So we'll wind up our fasting, serv uh, fasting season with the anointing service. What is anointing service? It's whereby uh, we will be anointing each and everyone who will be coming on that day as the culmination of uh, our fasting season. So our ministers will be here and then they will be anointing you plus praying for each and every one of you as just the culmination of our fasting season. Praise be to Jesus. So turn to your neighbor and tell him or her that this Sunday is anointing service Sunday. 
One more time, shout to him, this Sunday is anointing. Amen. Praise be to Jesus. And it will be done in all the services from 7, 8, 9, 30, and 11, 30. And another thing that we'll be doing on the same Sunday, praise be to Jesus. Another thing that we'll be doing on, this, on the same Sunday, in line with Isaiah 58, is, you know, Isaiah 58 calls upon the right way of fasting. Amen. And one of the things that comes out clearly on the, on the right way of fasting is helping the poor, sharing, you know, food, sharing clothes. And that is one of the things that we'll be doing on that day. So I'm here to request you that on this coming Sunday, come with something to share. Come with food products, come with clothes. We'll be having a, bas a basket uh, back there whereby we'll be giving Food will be giving clothes to those who do not have. So as you come this Sunday, make sure you have carried something that you'll be sharing before God. Something that you, you will be giving as part and parcel of, you know, attaching to the fasting season that you've been having. Praise be to Jesus. So I believe in this Sunday you'll be coming with something. Be it food, food so that we can share to the poor, so that we can share to those who do not have even clothes so that we can also share to those who do not have. Praise be to Jesus. Am I understandable there? And lastly, in this last day, we'll be having, we'll be having a giving, a sacrificial giving. You know, to some of us who uh, uh, be fasting on these all 40 days of, uh, of, 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 of fasting, the 40 days, you know, the, the, the food that you're missing, the, the lunch that you're missing, you know, some of us uh, always keep that, that, that uh, m money that you would have used to, 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 get, to buy food aside. So we are calling you that on that day, you might come before the Lord and offer that which you've been giving or you've been serving for the Lord as a sacrificial offering. So I'm here to encourage you that also on this Sunday, you come with a sacrificial giving, sacrificial offering offering that the Lord will bless you on this time of uh, Lent season as we wind up our, give, uh, our fasting season this Sunday. Praise be to Jesus. So I hope you remember those uh, four things that I've just said that this Sunday will be anointing service. So prepare yourself for the anointing service. This Sunday will be coming with uh, food products to share to the poor, to share to those who do not have and also, we'll be having clothes. We'll come with clothes, you know, those clothes that we'll also be sharing to those who do not have. And we'll also be carrying a sacrificial uh, giving on that day. Praise be to Jesus. Now, allow me to share to you in these few minutes that we've had, uh, we have having, just some things uh, that God has blessed us to share this evening. And the topic of the day comes from the topic that we have uh, today on our 36th uh, day of fasting and which is the mercy of God. Can we say the mercy of God? One more time, can we say the mercy of God? And we will understand that this topic was drawn from these uh, verses, the verses that guide us on, 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 our, our, on this day comes from the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 which says, let us therefore Come boldly to uh, the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. That comes from the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. And in the book of Psalms chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayers. Praise be to Jesus. Today we are discussing about the mercy of God. The mercy of God. And one, this is one of those topics that are very important for us to understand. Because just like the way grace is very important for you to understand. Because these are the topics that form bases for your salvation. That's why the first verse that we've read is which says that, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help us in the time of need. Because these are the topics that are very important for a believer to know because they inform you onto the basis of your salvation. Praise be to Jesus. 
Now, on beginning of this topic, I want us to define what mercy is. What mercy is. And simply, you can define mercy as compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. It is the compassion or forgiveness. Forgiveness towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. Now listen to me. For you to, to understand the meaning of mercy, you need to listen to this. So mercy comes after someone who is in the position to, to punish another person who has done wrong. But when that person decides not to punish that other person, then that person has shown mercy. When, when, when the president decides, to, or, or, or when the judge decides to show you mercy, in other words, is whereby when the judge sees that you have done wrong, and this judge decides that, I will not punish you for the wrong that you have done. So, you read in the book of Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, Lamentation, chapter 3, verse 22 to uh, verse 23. The Bible says this. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Look at this. You know, there are, there are ways that we sin before God. There are ways that we fall short of God's glory because we sin in one way or another. The Bible actually shows us it's through Lord's mercy. It's because of his mercy we are not consumed. In other words, in other words, if there was no God's mercy, because of the sins that sometimes we do, because of the way we fall short of God's glory, we were supposed to be consumed already. We are supposed to be destroyed already. But the Bible says, just because of his mercies, just because of his mercies, we are not consumed. Just because of his mercies, we are not consumed. In other words, there's a way you fall short of God's glory every day. By thoughts, by the way you speak, by the way you act. You know, and because of God's justice that we are going to learn down there, because of God's justice, you are supposed to be punished because of what you have done. You are supposed to be punished because of, of, of the sins that you do. But the Bible shows us that it's because of God's mercy. In other words, it's because of God's compassion. Because of God's compassion. And what is God's compassion? Is how God shows pity on you. God looks at you and says, well, yeah, you are a sinner and sin is troubling you. If I do not show you this compassion, if I do not forgive you, then you will be destroyed. And the Bible says it's because of God's compassion, then we are not co consumed. That compassion con co informs God to show mercy on us. And the Bible says they are new every morning. So every morning, there's new compassion that drives God to show mercy on you. I keep on saying, we thank God because God is God. And we thank God because we don't vote God in or we don't vote God out. Like how we vote in presidents or we vote, in, uh, or we vote them out. Because if this position of being God was voted in, I'm telling you, one person will one day sit on the position of God and the next thing you see on earth is people, you know, someone is walking and, and, and a smoke come out of him because they have already been thunderstricken by God. Why? This person is a sinner. And boo! Just punish them just like that. But because of God is full of compassion, he always show us mercies. So I want you to understand these two things go together. Compassion and mercy goes together. Out of God's compassion, out of God's forgiveness, out of God's Masses out of God's pity, how He shows sympathizes with you, then He withholds His punishment, so He forgives you. When I was if you, in other words, you'll say, Mercy is forgiving, mercy is forgiving, choosing not to punish but deciding to forgive. When I was if you, choosing not to decide to act on His position to. 
punish the sins, but decides to forgive. That's how mercy works. Bwana Yesu asifiwa one more time. Now, I want you to know, and if you're writing, you need to write this, that mercy is God's character. Among many other characters of God, I want you to know that mercy is God's character. In the book of Exodus chapter 33 verse 19, the Bible says this, Exodus chapter 33 verse 19, it says this, And the Lord said, I will, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. And listen to this. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Actually, God is showing that in my attitude, in my character, I have that capacity to show mercy on whomever I want to show mercy. And I will show compassion on whom I want to show compassion. Why? Because it is his character. And you'll understand as he was talking to Moses, he was telling him that eh, I will cause all my goodness. So when the Lord was passing, his goodness was following him on his glory. So the character of his goodness, one of the things that you understand that makes God to be good or, or shows the goodness of God, he is capacity to show mercy. That's why the Bible says that I, 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 I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will show compassion on whom I have compassion on. In the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 15 to verse 16, the Bible actually says this. Actually, Paul echoes what was written in the book of Exodus chapter 33. And it says that, For he says to Moses, now this is Paul saying, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. So you understand, you cannot do anything to earn God's mercy. You cannot do anything to force God to show mercy. It is God who gives mercy because it is his. It is his character. It is the character of God to show mercy. You know, the other day, I went to a memorial service. And I was listening to how people pay their respects to the one that uh, passed. And one of the things that they were saying about that person is, this person had good heart. You know, they said, this person had a good heart. Whenever you see him, he will always, I, this person was talking in a vernacular language, showing that whenever they visit, he will always, the first thing that she will always do is to send the children to the car to take out the good things that she will always come with. So it looks like this is the behavior of this person that whenever they visit, because of the good heart, they will always carry gifts. Because it is within their character. And here, the Bible shows us that because the character of God is showing mercy, you don't need to do anything to force him to do it. It is because it is within his character, he will show that, 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 that mercy. So you can't force God. You can't do something, you know, to show that, God, I want this mercy, or forcing God to show mercy. Because the Bible shows us that, but Paul says, it depends, it, it does not depend on human desire or effort. So you can't do anything to force God to show mercy. Because it is within his character. Now, there are three things I want us to discuss very quickly. Three things about mercy. When you speak about mercy, what does it mean? There are three elements that are found in mercy that when they are done, then mercy is being shown. And if you're writing it down, this is a very important place to write down. The first thing is called justice. Can we say justice? One more time, can we say justice? What is justice? Justice means giving each person what he or she deserves or in more traditional way or terms we say giving each person his or her due you see we are we are defining the elements of mercy 
And you need to understand that God is a just God. In other words, when something happens, God is God of justice. And because he's God of justice, he will never contradict himself. Because everyone will go to God to, to seek justice. So he needs to be the God of justice in himself and even to those that he shows justice. So what does justice say? Justice says that you give each person what he or she desires. If you are a sinner, you are given what you deserve. And you deserve punishment. And you are given punishment. You are given everything that you do. Everything that you have done. So you deserve. Whatever you deserve is what you are given. When we, when we were young and we do mistakes, in the evening, my, parent, my father will come and say that, Kila mtu aje kuchukua haki yake. So for those who did wrong, haki yao ilikuwa ni nini? Viboko. For those who do wrong, whatever they deserve was sticks. But to those who did well, whatever they deserved was good things. So the justice of God always calls him to become just and gives everyone what they deserve. And in this part, I want, I want to show you something so that you understand as I define mercy, because there's something I want to speak here when it comes to justice, that I want us to be so careful, because whenever we go before God, this thing we cry before God, and I feel it is wrong. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 7, verse 4 to 7, Luke chapter 7, verse 4 to 7, the Bible says this, when they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with him, this man, listen to this word, this man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and he built and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself for I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. Now look at me. We say one of God's character that informs his mercy is his capacity to show justice. And when we say justice, we say it is him giving everyone what he deserves. You know, there was someone here, a centurion, whose servant was sick. And he sent the elders, the Jews, to Jesus because they knew Jesus had the capacity to heal. So one of the things that the elders said to Jesus is that they followed Jesus. They said to Jesus, Jesus, you deserve to do this guy, this favor. You deserve, you know, you should do this because he deserves it. And the problem of opening the Pandora box of deserve, it means when you do right, you deserve to be rewarded. And when you do wrong, you also deserve to be punished. Do you see now where mercy is very important? Because when you use the word you deserve, it means you're opening a Pandora box. If you deserve to be, for God to do this to you, also you deserve to be punished when you do wrong. That's why when this guy, when Jesus came, this guy went very fast and said, ah, ah, God, I, Jesus, I don't deserve this. I don't even deserve you coming here. Because he understood whatever he needed from Jesus was his mercy. Because if you open the Pandora box of justice and you call on to the issue of deserve this and deserve not, you open a very big Pandora box. And many Christians normally go before God and tell God, God, why didn't you give this? Give me this. I have saved you. You know how much I've been fasting. You know what are you trying to tell God? God, I deserve you to give me this because I have been doing this. And whenever you open that door, you're opening a two-way. If you deserve it, good things, you also deserve punishment when you're doing wrong. 
So you need to be so careful when you deal with this issue of deserve when it comes to justice. The second thing that I want you to understand is punishment. Can we say punishment? Punishment is a penalty as a retribution for an offense. So justice says that you are wrong and you need to be given what you deserve. And because you have done wrong, you are, you are, you, you, what you deserve is punishment. But the third thing that is very important is called discretion. And the discretion is God's power to say that I will not punish you, but I will forgive you. I will not punish you, but I will forgive you. That's the third thing. So when all these three things stay together, then God's mercy is being shown. So he has shown you justice that, you know what? You deserved punishment. I have the capacity to punish you. But God decides to show you mercy. And discretion is the freedom to decide what should be done in a particular situation. So God decides that, Peter, I will not punish you. I will let you go free. But there's one thing you need to learn out of that. And which I want all of us to learn. In the book of Exodus chapter 33, verse 2 to 3, the Bible says, I will send an angel. God was talking to, to, to Moses. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hevatites, and Jebusites. Go up to the land flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you because you are stiff naked people and I might destroy you on the way. God is actually showing discretion there. That Israel, you have sinned against me. So I will not go with you. Because if I go with you, I will destroy you. Why will I destroy you? Because my, just, my justice calls that whenever sin is sin, should be punished. Should be punished. So I decide to give you an angel to go with you. Because if I go with you, I will punish you. You know, sometimes we go through services and after the service, you find the service is dry. You don't feel the presence of God. And we begin looking at one another. Who should we blame for the service to become this dry? Should it be the worship coordinator? Ah, uh -uh. it is the worship leader. Ah, uh ah, -uh. the pastor today eh, was not, <laughs> did not spend time with God. But one of the other things that you need to understand, sometimes God does not present himself or his presence or he does not appear because of his mercy he cares for you he cares if he comes actually he needs to punish the sins that you have if he comes the sins that you have he needs to punish but he decides to withhold that and decides to give you time for you to, to be able to ask forgiveness so those three things you need to understand as far as mercy is concerned. Justice, punishment, and God's discretion for not punishing. Now quickly, the question is, why does God show mercy? And here I'll go very fast. Why does God show mercy? Because it will be of God's advantage just to punish you and to you know, remove you out of his plan or out of his problems of you always sinning against him. But you need to understand that the first thing that informs us of why God shows mercy is that God does it for his glory. God shows mercy for his glory. In the book of Romans chapter 9 verse 22 to 23 the Bible says, what if God although choosing to show his wrath and make his power known bore with great patience the objects of wrath, of his wrath prepare for destruction destruction. For what if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the object of his mercy whom he prepared in advance for his glory. So when God shows mercy to you it's for that, it's for that he shows that his glory to show himself off. Because when you sin, remember one of the people who prosecute or, or persecutes you or prosecutes you one of the people who goes to complain before God is the devil. Because the devil goes before God and says, God, look at Kibet. Kibet has actually messed up. And out of God's glory, God will just say, stand and say, because I am God 
And because I am God of mercy, I have decided to show him mercy. And out of there, he's been glorified because you literally understand out of his own character, there is mercy. So when God shows you mercy, it is for his own glory. But the second thing is because he loves us. Amen. Because he loves us. In the book of Lamentation, the same verse we've read, Lamentation chapter, 30, chapter 3, verse 22 to 23, in NIV version, it says this, Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Because of his great love, he just looks at you and because of his great love, because he loves you, he doesn't want to destroy you. He decides to show you mercy. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 5, it says, But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgression. It is by his grace you have been saved. So God looks at you and he's like, just because I love this young man, let me just show him mercy. Let me just show him mercy. Because out of that mercy, salvation will come. Amen. So I want you to know that God loves you too much. That's why he will always show mercy on you. But the, la the third point, and then the fourth is the last one. The third point is to give us time to repent. To give us time to repent. God shows mercy so that you repent. And the problem of us, whenever we speak about the word repent, we normally just think of one side of the word repent. We think repentance is us going before God and say, God forgive us. No. It is more than that. Oh, it is more than us just saying, Oh yeah, Mungu ni mkukosea. Oh yeah. It is more than that. The word repentance comes from this, uh, this Greek word called metanoia. Can you say metanoia? You see, metanoia, in other words, is if I was going this way, me turning 180 degree, it is called metanoia. If I was going this way, me turning this way and beginning to go this way, that is actually called repentance. If you are sinning, if you are going on this di direction, God is showing you mercy because he wants you to turn 180 degree and to do what is right. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Sio kwamba Mungu aone unachokifanya. Anakiona. Sio kwamba hawezi kukupunish. He can punish you. But he's extending his mercy for you to repent. For you to do the metanoia. For you to turn 180 and leave whatever you are doing. And repent and go back to God. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So when you ask for mercy, you allow God to give you that period for you to be able to repent. Hallelujah. And lastly, because God is showing us mercy because he wants to become an example to us. Amen. He wants to become an, a good example to us. In the book of Luke chapter 6, verse 36, it says this. Luke 6, 36, it says this. Therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. Therefore, be merciful just as your father also is merciful. In other words, God is saying, as the way I forgive you, also forgive others. It is within your position, it is within your power to punish someone who has wronged you. But the way I'm showing you mercy, extend it to, to others. But the problem, when you read in the book of Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 to 33, you learn about the example of that king who wanted to settle his accounts. And he came to realize that there was one of his servants that he owed him pieces of gold. Do you remember? And he decided to forgive him because he was supposed to sell him, sell his children, sell his property for him to regain his money back. But he decided to do what? To forgive. And after being forgiven, this guy walks out into the courts of the king. He meets his other friend that he owed him silver. He was forgiven gold, but him, he owed this other guy pieces of silver. And what does the Bible say? This guy <laughs> held him by the throat. 
And then when the king heard, Kwamba, I just forgave this guy pieces of gold. Why can't he even forgive pieces of silver? The Bible says that. He ordered this guy to be taken to what? To prison. This is like us. We are very difficult people when it comes to the issue of forgiving. It's very hard for us to show us to show other people mercy. But we want God to show us mercy, but we don't want to show others mercy. Today, I want you to know, God is giving you mercy so that you can learn to show others mercy. Forgive. Forgive your mother. Forgive your friend. Show mercy to others because the same way you're showing others mercy is the way God shows mercies to you. Praise be to Jesus. Let us close our eyes. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for this time that you've given us, God, to discuss about your mercies. And Father, there's a lot of things we've learned. And there's a lot of things to be learned about the mercies of God. For instance, what does the mercies of God do to our lives? But because of time, God, we can't learn all of these things. So I'm here to pray for your Holy Spirit to keep on teaching your children about mercy. Because there's strength in your mercies. That's why the book of Hebrews says that let us approach God with confidence. Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we can get mercy and grace. Father, I pray that you keep on teaching us about this. But also, Father, help us show mercy to others. I know there are people here who are finding it hard to forgive others. They find it hard to show mercy to others. I pray, God, as they enjoy your mercy, I pray that, God, you give them grace to show mercy to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and believe. Amen. Can we clap our hands to the Lord? Welcome, brother. That's where we get that song from. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. Thank you Lord, uh, for allowing the Lord to use you to bless us this evening. Um, we want to apologize for those who tried to join us on Zoom and they were not able to join, but the IT team has been working to resolve that. But we still are on on the YouTube channel. We come to that point where we worship the Lord with our gifts. So will ask thank you very much 88150 is our pay bill number and then you can give on that account that is there 88150 and I also want to invite those who are with us online on this restoration service to give of the offering through the pay bill number should you wish to have an envelope to organize your giving for today or for Sunday, we have our brother who is waiting on us physically to, to give us an envelope. So you wish to give into the basket, our brother is here with us doing that wonderful service on our behalf. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, His mercies never come to an end.
So I'll invite us to stand as we come to the close of our service this evening. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, we want to thank you for your mercy, Lord, that you renew in our lives every single morning. And Father, we don't realize that when we wake up each morning, Lord, you give us a new lease of life. But you also give us a new shot at your mercy, O God. And because of how merciful we are, O Lord, we do not stand accused before you, O Lord. And for that, Lord, we are grateful. We want to thank you, Lord, for your word that you've spoken to us so powerfully, Lord, to remind us that we can always approach your throne of grace and mercy to obtain mercy and grace, Lord, for the journey ahead. We want to thank you, Lord, for those of us gathered in-house, for those of us online, Jehovah, King of Glory. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will continue, Lord, to speak to us through your word tonight, that, Father, your body will be edified for the glory and honor of your name. We thank you, Father, for the offerings that have been brought forth by your people in the house, Lord, and also through mobile money, Lord. We ask that you may bless it for use in this place, O God, for the glory and honor of your holy name. And even now, as we depart from this place, O Lord, we commend ourselves into your care, Lord, that you may go with us. May you bless us, Lord, and grant us safe journey mercies home. For we ask in Jesus' name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he always cause his face to shine before you. May he bless you in your coming in and in your going out. May he bless your food as he blesses your water. May you bless you today, this evening, and in the days coming, and forevermore. In Jesus' name. Let's bless each other with the words of the grace. And please don't close your eyes and smile at somebody. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Kibet and Tim, over to you. For the good things you have, we've come to praise you. We've come to love you. We've come to praise you for, for the good things you have. Oh, we've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to love you. Oh, we've come to praise you for, for the good things you have. Stay away. You are worthy of my prayer. Worthy of my prayer. Yahweh. You are worthy of my praise. Yahweh. Of my praise, you are worthy of my praise.